Sometimes designing a good plan for public participation is complicated, not only because in Spain it's not a habit for us to intervene in these kinds of matters, but also because political matters make this relationship complicated sometimes. If between citizens and public administrations we include an external private company, relationships tend to improve. We have talked about the benefits of creation and development of cities with public participation, but today we'll look at private-public cooperation. This is a new program of the series Looks on Public Participation by the Innovative Teaching Group Directors Marta Lora Tamayo, Professor of Administrative Law, and Antonio Lopez Peláez, Professor of Social Work, who we will now listen to. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. We never know on the radio here at UNED where you're listening from since uh, this is a podcast, but it's a pleasure to be here with you with Marta Lora, Professor of Administrative Law and Director of the program. I, Antonio Lopez, I'm a Professor of Social Work, but today we're very lucky to have Ariela with us. She works in Tech Friendly, a company working on public participation processes to make participation more dynamic. In this comprehensive vision of our public participation programs, it's fantastic to participate, to engage with local entities, but it's key and fundamental to provide a voice to different experiences as powerful as the ones carried out by Ariela in the framework of private company intervention in these kinds of processes. How are you? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're listening from. Thank you for inviting me to participate. Start by telling us what TechFriendly does. TechFriendly is a consultancy office. It works on strategic planning, but also on technological, more engineer-related matters. We work with territories, municipalities, and lands. We work on the social and environmental development of these territories. Public participation is cross-sectional and we take it very seriously in all the projects that we carry out with these cities, towns and territories. So in your strategic line, participation and working, involving your citizens, that's one of your main competitive advantages. Yes, we actually think it's a necessary variable for all of these processes and projects to be more powerful, stronger. Thank you, Ariela, for this new program with the participatory group. And we know that you have contributed already in some of our workshops for experts. And we are very interested in something we are seeing in big companies that I'm not going to mention, not to give them publicity. But we see that they are including participation and sustainability in their project because participation is cost effective. It provides a lot of social benefits, but also profit because participated processes lead to fewer conflicts and they run much more smoothly and efficiently. So our question for you is, I mean, we've had different programs asking city councils how they carry out their participation processes, but how can a company like Tech Friendly intervene? I mean, don't tell us about procurement contracts, etc. that I'll leave for my lessons about administrative law. But how do you cooperate with citizens and with local entities? How do you form the triangle, companies, administrations and citizens? I think public-private cooperation is fundamental, but how do you channel it? Because it can't be easy. From the perspective of citizens, but also of the city councils themselves who are used to their own processes and procedures. How do you intervene? It's groundbreaking what you do. How do you channel everything? Tell us. I'd like to start by saying that I totally agree with you with regards to the financial aspect. Participation leads to the financial development of territories. I would like to remind you that when we talk about sustainability, it's social, environmental and financial. And these three lead to a true, real uh, sustainable development. So I 
Totally agree with you. What is most interesting about participation of citizens is that it allows for the definition of problems and challenges taking place in these territories to be the most realistic and closest to reality as possible. This allows us to define actions, measures that are also relevant for these problems. That's how private consultants come in. It's key to cooperate between the private and public sector because we have kind of a political crisis, a representation crisis right now. So public-private cooperation allows us to incorporate an external agent that will be perceived as neutral who can basically channel this participation without the political burden and institutional connotations that city councils and technicians themselves have, which is one of the biggest challenges that technicians face and moderators too. In public participation processes in municipalities, they are trying to encourage public participation, but they are so close to the city councils and the governments, the political parties, that citizens are skeptical to participate. That's where an external agent, an expert in participation processes can be a guarantee for a less politically charged participation. Conflicts are part of life, but that's very interesting what you're saying, because it's true that when there's participation, decisions make sense. Some decisions are totally wrong because they didn't take the different stakeholders into account. I mean, people need to be daring, take risks, but when people are asked what they want, they can be ambitious too. What are the biggest challenges that you see in channeling these processes? What are the big difficulties, challenges, and what good practices have you developed to confront them? Well, I am Argentinian. I don't know if you can tell by my accent, but I come from a continent and a country that is really participatory. For better or for worse, Latin Americans love to engage, to get involved, to participate, sometimes in a better or worse way. I mean, there's a bit of everything, but our culture is really participatory. What caught the attention most about Spanish participation in the last three years that I've lived here is precisely that we are not working out that participation channel. And I think it's both the citizens and administration's fault. It's like the chicken and the egg dilemma. Citizens don't want to participate. City councils and town halls, I mean, with certain exceptions, don't do this very often, with exceptions, of course. But at Tech Friendly, we are trying to encourage this as much as possible. We want to boost participation from the definition of problems. Once the solution has been designed, it's useless to participate. Co-creation, co-design, taking into account their problems, defining their problems is the way to reach tangible, realistic solutions. One of the good practices that I always like to mention because it's a fantastic anecdote I don't want to mention the name, but a municipality in Spain thought that by buying a school bus, they would be able to reduce car accidents. They had already made the decision when they talked to us. They had already bought the bus. But then we realized that car accidents were taking place during the weekend, not the week. So the school bus was never going to solve the problem. This is what happens when... We participate in the solution space instead of defining the problem together with our citizens. And that's where we need to work a little bit more, not only from the part of the town halls and city councils, but also citizens. We need to work with them so that they demand their own participation from the get go. I think this is very interesting. We sometimes talk about fantastic ideas, but many others are terrible. Some people have awful ideas, even if they think they're doing things well. In the local framework, you need to reach consensus. And participation will always lead to better results than an individual's idea. I'll give you a recent example that I saw. A city council thought that in order to manage waste better, they would put a stick, a large column, in front of every home for people to hang their rubbish there. What's happening with that? All neighbors are taking out the rubbish at the same time. 
that it's 40 degrees in the Mediterranean in summer and it's very smelly. They've changed all legislation and they've done everything already. But when you go there, you think, oh my God, what a terrible idea. There are 1,000 sticks with rubbish floating about. Was this a participatory process? No, the whole town is furious. Participation is cost-effective because it saves us from some individual's crazy ideas because one person cannot, have, cannot be as brilliant as a group. I would tell these geniuses a very Argentinian sentence. I would tell them to basically stop trying to invent the wheel from their desks. They should go out to the streets and work with citizens because... At the end of the day, they think they are geniuses and that they have a solution that, to a problem that doesn't exist or a solution that is just wrong. As you were saying, financially, it's irrational not to participate with citizens financially, climate-wise. Also, I'm telling you, this was a town located at the coast. It was awful, really smelly. Ariel, I love what you're saying because us in our Lands and Sustainable Development Masters classes, there's an expert in conflict resolution and public participation. And we insist a lot that participation needs to stem from conflict. At Tech Friendly, you've been very smart to hire you because Latin America has an expertise that is way ahead of us from this perspective. One of the key topics that we should focus on is basically not getting citizens involved in topics that we all agree on already. It's just about reaffirming a previously decided matter. No, you need to take risks and be courageous, be brave and participate with citizens in conflict. Do I need a waste treatment plant, a cemetery? A crossroads, whatever topic that is controversial, don't you think this should be getting citizens involved? What is your expertise? You've been designing many urban agendas. Do you see that there's an institutional fear, and this is understandable, to shed light on the municipality's problems? Yes, 100%. This actually reminds me of our own perception of participation in Spain. We're talking a lot about participation due to the next generation funds and the mandatory aspect of participation nowadays. But I always want to remind you that in Latin America, what we see as public participation is a very small part of an open government. That's the term we use. There's a resistance to an open government. We need to open it up. It's much more ambitious than simple public participation. Yes, there are better and worse examples. There's a lot of skepticism in different fields because, as I was saying, the muscle of participation is not trained enough in Spain. What happens? is that the same people participate every single time. And sometimes the people participating want to destroy the process and they are not being constructive. It's both sides' fault. It's the conception of the participation processes. If I'm just asking my citizens to contrast or validate something that I've already decided, of course, this is not going to be welcomed by the citizens. Citizens are very smart. So let's do them justice. Don't just ask them, oh, how fantastic do you think my idea is from zero to ten? How much of a genius am I from my desk? Because many participation processes are like that. And in the case of urban agendas, these are a spectacular opportunity to open up to citizens from the get-go. Look at the conflicts, the challenges, the problems. And for the action plan, which is a collection of initiatives and decisions that city councils are taking on from now to 2030, this is much better. Urban agendas are a great opportunity to rethink participation, to rethink open governments. When we look at decisions from now to 2030, we're talking about the mid, long term, beyond one pub, uh, political party, one term, one mandate. We can give citizens the role of the protagonist of their own story because 
citizens are the ones who are going to live in the territories from now to 2030. Whereas politicians come and go all the time. Well, in local administrations, many people stayed for long. But yes, there's a conflict in participation. In many cases, what happens is that urban agendas allow for a participation in the mid and long term from the point of view of an open debate. But in some participation processes, it's interpreted, well, as you were saying, these are invaded by collectives and peoples who don't want to participate, just want to criticize or to push forward their agenda. This is not participatory. This is just a quest to unsettle the public. It's funny because when we look at participation dynamics, I wanted to ask you with regards to the 2030 agenda and urban agendas in the so in social media, what we see is less participation and more of a controversy and polarization of our society, what we call eco chambers, people repeating and repeating the same thing we see here and in Latin America too. So could you give us three um, tips with us and our listeners with regards to participation to avoid, as in many groups, to have a small sector who can, of course, have a legitimate interest, but who might try to monopolize the dialogue. I think the key is in the design of the process itself. The different stages that I can establish, the methodologies specifically that I'm going to use and which stakeholders I will count on. Often we engage in participatory processes without a design. We think, well, we can start participating and then we'll decide on the design. No, this is not the way to do things. We need to preset, to predefine the participatory process. And this needs to enable further decision-making processes. We need a mapping of stakeholders. We need to understand who the main stakeholders in my territory are, what collectives are there. We need to be empathetic with these collectives. We need to understand what they want, what they understand, their biggest frustrations, concerns, so that I can forecast the types of conflicts that might come up during the participation process. Once I understand the collectives, I can understand how to design the participation process so that this participation is as constructive as possible. It might happen that each collective needs a different methodology, tool or participation channel that is completely different. Recently, I was doing a co-creation workshop and I was told, oh, I thought this was so much simpler, but that's a misconception. Creating a citizen participation plan is very complex because each decision making process is different. Each historical moment, municipality and group is different. And it's very likely that each stakeholder or collective requires a different tool or channel. And that is precisely the biggest challenge. We need to have that sensitivity socially to interact differently with different groups so that it's useful for them without monopolizing the process. Of course, this is very important without undermining the representation, but giving them the right channel so that they can be the true protagonists. So design is key, mapping stakeholders is key, showing empathy for these groups is key, and designing the channels that are more appropriate is fundamental. Thank you. You've really explained to us how to do it. I understand that the practice is much more complex. It requires a lot of effort. This is just a personal comment, but I would like to finish by talking about polarization. Apart from polarization, we also see many cases in the youth and children and adolescents. I mean, one of the aims that we should set is to for them to really understand what's happening in their environment, their school, their town hall, their parks, their spaces. What is the best channel to encourage the participation of the youth? Maybe not for them to participate, but at least for them to be aware and to understand that they can transform a reality. We don't just want them to vote when they are 18. I don't know if I agree with their lack of awareness and knowledge of the youth and children. I think one, two months ago, we were carrying out children's workshops in the municipality of Galicia in the Urban Agenda framework. And whenever I leave, I'm always very excited because 
yes, we need to create the appropriate channel for these collectives to express themselves and to tell us what they want, how they feel. Because I think it's clearer to them than in the case of adults, we need to define the right channels. Today, there's a lot of information, there's much more awareness than we think, but there's a big distance. If we don't provide the youth with the right channels, it's very difficult to understand how polarized they are and what they think. So I would insist on the participation channels. What a fantastic idea, because the assumption that the youth doesn't want to participate or that the elderly don't want to participate, that fuels into their frustration. They might not be interested, they might think that the channel goes against their lifestyle or is obsolete, and that is one of the biggest challenges that we face in terms of social media and the participation of the youth. It's been a pleasure to listen to you, Ariela. At UNET, we try to tackle different topics. So, with regards to this project, the participatory group, we've done so many workshops, almost 40 radio shows we work with many cities and we're basically betting on broadening reflections of public participation. We've got a very significant audience so it's been a true privilege to count on your experience to hear about public private cooperation and how to increase participation in our daily lives. Thank you this has been really inspiring. I love your project and I think it can be replicated very easily elsewhere. So it, again, it's been a pleasure to cooperate to talk to you. Thank you so much, Ariela. See you next time. Rest assured that we will talk to you again. We therefore understand that participation needs to stem from conflict, that participation projects work better if there is a private company involved, that participation plans are complex and it needs a foundation for it to be effective and that Spanish citizens need to train to work out their participation muscle. That is Ariela's opinion. She's a coordinator of urban areas at Tech Friendly Consultancy Office specialized in smart cities and sustainable development. She has been interviewed by Antonio Lopez Pelad, professor of, of social work, and Marta Lora Tamayo, professor of administrative law at UNED.